am going to call this meeting of the Montpelier Development Review Board to order. It is Monday, September 21st. Um, and welcome. Thank you for being here, wherever here is, Zoom land. Um, what I would like to do is start by going around and having um, DRB members introduce themselves. My name is Kate McCarthy. I chair the DRB. And I'll just say your name and you can introduce yourself. Please unmute before you do, starting with Jean. Oh, Jean Leon, DRB. And Roger. Roger Kranz, DRB. Abby. Hi, everyone. Abby White, I'm the newest member of the DRB. Welcome. Joe. Joe Cannon, DRB member. Rob. Rob Goodwin, DRB member. Hi, Rob. And Michael. Yeah, Michael, DRB. Hi, Kate. Hi, Michael. Welcome. And we are also joined and assisted by Meredith Crandall, who is our zoning administrator. We are being filmed by Orca Media. And Tammy Furry is the recording secretary who makes this all into minutes that we can understand, which we appreciate very much. All right, so with introductions, um, we'll get to the next item on the agenda here, which is staff review of procedures um, in the Zoom format. So I'll turn it over to Meredith. There uh, we go. Um, so I am sharing this document. It's mostly for um, people who are viewing on ORCA at home who, if they decide they want to then join the DRB meeting, they may. Um, so those viewing Orca Media, you can participate in this development review board meeting if you so choose. You can log in to the Zoom meeting using this link here directly. Um, you can also call into the meeting with this phone number um, using the meeting ID and password. Um, you can download the complete meeting packet or even just specific application materials through this link here that links you to the agenda and all those meeting materials. If you're trying to get in and you're having problems, please email me here at mcrandall. Um, full email address is right there. Um, I will leave this up while I finish the other participation and procedures information. Um, so this Zoom meeting is being recorded um, as well as streamed live via Orca Media. Turning on your video is optional. Public testimony will be taken verbally. Um, the chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. Um, you can chat with me directly if you have any issues with how to use different functions. Um, and the chat will be added to the public record if it's used. Please keep your microphone on mute when you are not speaking to reduce background noise. And for those participating by phone, star six will allow you to mute or unmute. Um, as a host, I can also usually mute or unmute people, but it kind of depends on your personal login features. Um, so I may, you may see a little thing that's asking me to, you know, me asking you to unmute. Um, if you're interested in speaking on a particular matter and you didn't say that you'd like to speak on that when you first logged in or you're an applicant for one thing, but it turns out you have an interest in something else, um, please raise your hand either physically or by using the raise hand button on your toolbar. For those of you on the phone, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Um, or you can also state your name if you're unmuted if you need to do it that way. And then once the chairs recognized you um, to participate, please unmute your microphone, confirm that you can be heard, and provide your full name and address for the record. This is mostly for people who are commenting, not necessarily applicants. We have your information in the application file. Um, for those commenting on applications, once you've been recognized by the chair, you're free to provide your questions or comments, aiming to keep them to two minutes. Um, Members of the board will then have the opportunity to respond or ask questions of you, and the applicant may have an opportunity to respond, but please everyone address the board, not each other. Um, the chair can grant additional time for speakers who have follow-up questions or comments. After you have um, finished, your microphone will be, sorry, somebody waiting. Um, microphone should be muted again. If you don't mute it, I may mute it for you. Um, and then the chair will move on to the next person who wants to speak. For people who do have comments, if you decide you want to talk again, you can speak again. You're not limited to just those two minutes, but please make sure that it's with, you've been recognized again by the chair. Um, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, if we are getting comments, if I'm getting emails and people just can't get in, we'll have to continue this to a time and place certain. 
Um, I already mentioned connectivity issues. Uh, if you're having trouble seeing the documents in screen share mode, um, like I said, all files are uploaded to the agendas and minutes page for this meeting on the city website. You can email me if you're having issues getting them. Please note that all votes taken during this meeting will be done by roll call vote. I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair, Kate. And Very good, thank you. Thanks for that overview, Meredith, we appreciate it. All right, so the next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda, um, which we will do by roll call. Are there any modifications to the agenda from board members? All right, in that case, do I have a motion to approve? I just had uh, one uh, note on the agenda, actually. Uh, the list of board members, uh, I don't think has been updated, but uh, I don't think it's worthy, but just a note. Okay, that is something that we can update for the record. Thanks for noticing that, Rob. All right, with that in mind, is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Motion by Roger, second? Second. Second from Gene. I'll call the roll. Gene. Here. Uh, Roger? Yes. Abby? Yes. Joe? Yes. Rob? Yes. Michael? Yes. And I also vote yes. We've approved the agenda. Thank you very much. All right, the next item on our agenda is comments from the chair. And the first thing I would like to do is extend a welcome to new board member, Abby White. Abby, thank you so much for stepping up and being part of this board. Thank you for your interest and, and for what you're going to bring to it. We're really looking forward to working with you and getting to know you as a board member. So thank you. Um, there, the other comment that I want to share is that I wanna let folks know about a temporary shift in the way that we're going to be doing things. Um, we've been doing Zoom hearings since about May. We've all been on that ride together. And you won't be surprised to know that one of the things that's been very challenging um, is running meetings as efficiently on Zoom as they would be run in person. Um, in, in addition, we lack the same sort of interpersonal clue, cues and clues for interacting with each other, with applicants, and that can make having a smooth discussion a little bit difficult. Um, out of respect for the public's time and to ensure that board members are fully able to deliberate on each application, to come up with the best conditions possible, and to do that without feeling rushed, uh, we have decided to pilot a closed deliberative session to make decisions on each application. Though the sessions will be closed, we will still be issuing a written decision. And we're gonna pilot this approach for about three months. We're going to see if it works for board members and for the public. We're going to be revisiting this um, as an agenda item on our late December or early January meeting. So I'll have a chance to talk about it and hear from people about what worked and what didn't. Um, if anybody has feedback on this approach, in the meantime, board members, members of the public, applicants, anyone at all, um, please contact Meredith and let her know your thoughts. We do want to hear from you. Um, so thank you for being willing to try this. Thank you for bearing with us. This is very much in the spirit of making sure that we have solid, fair decisions for our applicants. Um, and we're doing it for all applications because we want to avoid singling out individual applications for the deliberative session. We're just going to do it uniformly and predictably. Um, so that is something the board has discussed previously, but I wanted to make this public statement about this shift, um, temporary shift, pilot shift um, in this approach. So do, do any board members have any questions about that? Okay. Well, we're gonna move on to the next agenda item then, which is um, meeting minutes, voting on the meeting minutes of August 3rd, 2020. Does anyone have any edits to those minutes? I have just one. Um, on page two, at some point, it, it says amphibious migration. And I think we wanna say amphibian migration since that's what we've been, we were talking about. Um, yeah. And that's what the condition pertains to. So that way it'll just be consistent. Got it. Cool, thank you. Okay, so um, I will accept a motion to approve the minutes. Second the motion. Okay, do I, who made the motion? I'll make the motion, this is Joe. Motion by Joe, thank you. Second by Jean. Is that correct, Jean? 
Great, thank you. And I will call the roll of those eligible to vote. Um, Rob? Yes. Joe? Yes. Michael? Yes. Roger? Yes. Jean? Thank you, and I also vote yes. We have adopted the minutes of August 3rd. Very good. All right, so we're going to shift to our first application, which is for 11 Baldwin Street. And I will be recusing myself from this application because uh, it is my employer. And our vice chair is unable to be here this evening, so we need to do something um, that we have done occasionally, and that is to accept, accept a nomination for a, an interim vice chair, if you will. Um, Roger has uh, said that he is willing to serve that role for this application. And so I would like to invite a nomination to have Roger as vice chair for the 11 Baldwin Street application. Uh, I would make that motion, I guess. Joe? I would second the motion for Roger to be the vice chair on this. Thank you, second from Jean. And now we will call the roll uh, on that motion. Jean? Yes. Roger? You're muted. Abstain. Okay, I thought that's what you said, thanks. Um, Abby? Yes. Joe? Yes. Rob? Yes. Michael? Yes. And I also vote yes. Um, I am going to hand the reins of the meeting over to <clears throat> Rod and put them in Roger's very capable hands. I'm going to go off camera okay, until yeah. the conclusion of this, and um, I'll be back for the next application. Uh, if someone can send me a text message, that would be great, but I'll be nearby. Um, thank you. Over to you, Roger. Thank you, Kate. Uh, this is the application for conditional use review and minor site plan at 11 Baldwin Street. The applicant is the Vermont Natural Resources Council. Um, and that is represented by Mr. Shoup, is that correct? Mr. Shoup? Yes, that's correct. And uh, I'll swear you in in a moment. Are there other people uh, here to uh, testify to this uh, um application yes um asher nelson from vermont integrated architecture is here um we'll doing probably a bulk of the talking and kate stevenson from helm construction management is also here and may uh provide some input anyone else for this application well uh will you please those that will be testif yes meredith sorry i just i want to make find out there's a peter's ipad whoever that is if you could just tell me who you are so we can figure out what you're here for hey there peter ricker oh. i'm an adjoining landowner of uh, murray hill the next project thank you peter i appreciate it sorry for the interruption roger i just wanted to make sure that we knew who everybody was that's that's great murder thank you uh, please, uh, those uh, who are going to testify, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Great, thank you. Yes. Okay, so let's get on with this uh, application. Meredith, would you give us, um, uh, this is kind of an update, would you please give us a, a summary? Yes. Um, so... As you said, this is an application by the Vermont Natural Resources Council um, for a conditional use. It's to expand a conditional office use that the board approved last year by converting an additional 1,295 square feet of a former residential building into office space. Um, this expanded use also increases the minimum number of parking spaces required under section 3011 by one space. So when it was approved by the board last year, it only needed five spaces um, as a minimum. Now it needs six. Um, so when it was approved last year, the board actually granted VNRC the option to have fewer than the minimum required parking spaces. Um, and so the VNRC is asking for a similar allowance here. Um, a reminder to the board members that 
you can only evaluate those factors that are actually changing between this application and the prior permit. So even though they haven't actually um, constructed, say, the, the parking, second parking area off of Terrace Street, the board already approved it. So we have to, or you have to look at that as almost as already having been built. So they're just changing what they're asking for from that two um, spot parking space up top to a one spot parking space with some different design features. And that's, you know, same with changes to the site plan. So they previously had additional parking spaces down by the, um, main building off of Baldwin, they're reconfiguring those and adding an additional one. So you're looking at the changes between the previously approved site plan and this new proposed site plan. Great, thank you, Meredith. Uh, Mr. Shoup, would you like to uh, um, speak? Sure, uh, I will briefly. Thank, I wanna thank the, the board for your time. So as I represented to the board, I think there's a lot of new faces since last August or September. Um, the NRC was in a, a, a kind of a, a, a surprisingly good position to be able to acquire this parcel and convert the former Gibson residence um, to our office space. Um, at the time of my application, uh, we hadn't hired a design team yet. I just wanted to make sure that before we went ahead with the purchase, that we were able to use the, the property for the intended purposes. So we really weren't sure about some of the site design um, features that we were going to be um, designing. Also at that time, there was, uh, we didn't anticipate using a portion of the entire, the, of the building. There's an unheated, a currently unheated room above the garage. And there's two rooms on the third floor that we felt that we would kind of hold in reserve and not use for office space and hold that for future expansion. But as we went through the design process with our design team, we decided that we really, it was in our best interest now to go ahead with the full um, upgrade of the building. So that expanded the amount of office space that we hope to use. We also had a very rudimentary site design plan last time. It didn't adequately address um, stormwater management in my mind. So we made some significant changes to the site design for better water quality management. And we weren't sure how to deal with some minor kind of ledge removal that's adjacent to the driveway. And as we've got in and did some site exploration, we decided that there was more opportunities to um, improve the function of the area next to the driveway up, up by the, the, the back of the building. Um, so that's, that's kind of what brought us here today. Uh, we have a, a more complete design. Uh, Vermont Integrated Architectures can answer any questions or, or present an overview of what has changed since um, last September. And I guess I don't, um, and maybe when we get into parking, I'll have some more to add to that. But I, I think that's pretty much where we are. I don't know, Asher, could I? Uh, um, yeah. How, I guess, Mr. Chair, how would you like to proceed? Would you like a more background on what has changed and what we're proposing, or would you rather have the board um, uh, in inquire? I, um, I I would like to move fairly briskly through um, uh, Chapter 300 General Standards to get right to the uh, issue of parking and loading. That seems to be the major change, if that's agreeable with you, Mr. Shoup, and with, yeah. with, with board members. Does that sound agreeable, board members? You can shake your head one way or the other. Okay, well, let's, is that okay, Mary Ernest? Does that sound all right to you? Yeah, that's, that sounds great. I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay, well, let's, well, I, I have the staff report here, so I'm going to um, move through. Uh, <clears throat> the, the general standards I'm looking at um, dimensional, I'm looking at section 3002 and 3003 dimensional standards. 
And I'm going to skip right on page five to the staff finding. The staff finding says the subject parcel and proposed site plan changes meet the minimum lot size frontage and coverage requirements for the MUR district. Further proposed office use complies with the MUR district's density requirements. Um, I'm going to go to section 3004, demolition, not applicable, riparian rights, not applicable, wetlands and vernal pools, not applicable, steep slopes. Um, the staff finding is that 3007 steep slopes does not apply. 3008 um, um, erosion control. Um, staff findings are applicants expansion of the driveway will need to comply with the best practices listed in 3008 D, but a professionally prepared erosion control plan is not required given the small amount of land impact. Section 3009 stormwater management, the staff finding is given that the Public Works has not asked for additional stormwater plans. The nearby municipal stormwater storage infrastructure and applicants proposal to increase on site on site infiltration of stormwater flow. Staff suggests that the board concludes the sorry, staff suggests that the board conclude that this proposal complies with section 3009. Now we come to 310 uh, access and circulation. Um, And um, I would like, correct me if I'm wrong here, Meredith, I would like to move to section 3011, parking and loading. That seems to be the major issue before us uh, on this application, really. Yeah, no, 3010 is really, there's, it's a minute point that's flagged just because technically the changed upper parking area, but ultimately if the board decides that they're going to grant applicant their reduced parking numbers and don't worry about the upper parking area, then it doesn't even matter. Okay, okay. well, let's, 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 let's move to 311, section 311, which is on page 10 of the uh, of the staff report. Um, because of the expanded use uh, in the buildings, um, now six spaces are required. And um, the applicant has, um, um, in his application and their application, has um, proposed another one, um, in, which moves it to five um, on the property. And um, we, have the authority to waive um, that the requirement of six and leave it at five if if we wish. Um, and um, so so let let let's look at that let's look at that question if that if that's all right with with you, Mr. Shoup, and with your colleagues. Absolutely. All right. Do you want to? talk more about those requirements. Um, I think the short story is that um, when we increase the amount of conditional office use requested, we're, that, that drives the increase one, to one more parking spot. Um, in this case, we are, are also increasing the amount of area. Um, Brian mentioned the removal of some ledge. So we've actually expanded the flat area um, at the, basically what we're calling the upper level. It's, it's maybe um, eight or 10 feet above the street level um, to the northeast of the building. And that allows us to add one more parking space at that level. Um, in the last hearing uh, last summer, you basically granted four parking spaces there and had two on the Terrace Street level that were waived. Um, it, in this go around, we're proposing five on that level um, with our expanded area. And that allowed us to reduce the one on Terrace, just to one on Terrace Street. Um, but we're also requesting that to be waived for similar reasons. Um, and that allows us to construct a simpler spot. Um, it's, if you try to fit two parking spaces on Terrace Street um, nose in, you will need to 
build retaining walls to create that much flat space. Um, we were proposing to berm a single space because we have a, uh, more width at this point. Uh, in the findings, the, the Department of Public Works actually suggested a parallel parking spot there, which I, I'm like kicking myself. I was basically working from where we were before with two nose in parking spaces. So I narrowed it to one and made that work, but uh, a, a parallel space there would be much less impact. Um, you know, I think we'll still request a waiver, but uh, I think there's an easier way to do it than what was drawn. And that came through with the public works comments you've seen probably. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, I'm good. Um, would, would, would you, uh, in your application and in the staff report, we do have um, the um, reasons for granting a waiver and your responses to those. Could you could you go over those for the board, please? Um, sure, I mean, I, th I think to start at the highest level, which probably isn't um, listed in the staff report, is that we're talking about an organization that is trying to work actively to reduce transportation, uh, single car use and reduce our environmental impacts of our transportation choices. So. Um, any encouragement of public transit or alternative means of transportation um, fits right in with this organization. Um, that said, we are providing uh, covered in interior bike storage um, and showers. So people who do wanna walk, jog or bike to work have a place to store their bike, a means to get clean and change um, before work. Um, we also are proximal to multiple uh, public transit options. Um, so, you know, I think there are many of the same reasons that were presented in the last go around. Um, so making sense at an organizational level down to, um, you know, the options that are available and also uh, seasonal parking on, on Baldwin Street. Uh, I think that's the last one. Right. If, I could, if I could just add to that, um, the, those are the, the the basis of our request for a, a waiver, and and that's what you need to rest your your decision on. Um, we are we do encourage um, uh, carpooling and walking and biking to work. Several of our employees live in Montpelier and and currently walk, um, and we do we are in conversations with um, that are that are promising folks at the Christian Science Church. This is not a commitment on either part that we will, that this will result in um, uh, off-site parking, but they use their spaces on a very limited basis uh, and the lot that's part of the Union Mutual Insurance Company. So we are exploring a variety of different, different ways to minimize on-site parking. Um, but the most important one, as Asher said, is trying to minimize the use of automobiles uh, coming to and from the building. All right. Okay. Great. Thanks. Um, so, um, 3011.C3 has the criteria of board members. It's on the page 10 of the uh, staff report. I think the uh, uh, Mr. Shoup and his colleagues have addressed each of those uh, criteria. Um, now, let me ask board members, do you have questions um, for the applicants about this question? of waiving one, uh, the requirement for six, uh, and waiving one of those parking spaces based on our authority to do that. I'm just wondering, do you have a design visual available that you could pop up on the screen of that area, space? Asher, let me know if you don't have the share screen option for some reason, and I can always pull it up from the application package. That'd be great, Meredith. Okay. And are, are you referring to the uh, the Terrace Street lot or the main parking area down by the building? The main parking area. Right. Uh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Uh, That's the here. former one. Yep. There, can you all see that? 
So one, two, three, which is the EDA, four and five. And um, just to be clear, the Terra Street spot is not shown on this. This is only the lower portion of the site. Um, can I make one additional comment? Yes, certainly. Yeah, um, and this is just for, for background to understand how the regulations apply to different uses along Baldwin Street. My initial plan had been to widen the driveway all the way down to Baldwin to be able to use parallel parking up the driveway. That's a common practice on Baldwin Street. The various state, a couple of the state office buildings allow that. And the, sing, the only residential property owned by Down Street on the corner of Bailey and Baldwin also allow that. Because we're a non-residential building that's subject to municipal view, unlike the state buildings, we're prohibited from doing that. But that is a common practice on, on Baldwin. I just wanted to point that out as far as how, how parking is considered by, your, by the city's bylaws. Great, thank you very much. Uh, I, I would like to move to, uh, are there other questions from board members uh, about this uh, waiver request? Okay, I'd like to move to page 12 of the staff report. Um, and um, the staff has said on page 12 that we have um, three options. Uh, regarding this waiver request. Um, the first is to deny it, require all six parking spaces. Um, the second is to approve uh, the waiver with just the five lower parking place spaces and an option for applicant to construct the sixth. That would be on Terrace Street, I presume. And three, approving the application with just the five lower parking spaces, but disallowing the redesigned um, Terrace Street parking area. Under option three, applicants 2019 permit that authorizes a two space, two space parking area off Terrace Street would still be active until 2021. Um, I'm not sure how to proceed. I, I would ask the applicant, which of those would you like? Certainly you don't want number one, where we disapprove the waiver. Uh, between two and three, do you have any <laughs> voice, any uh, preference? Ryan, I'll have to defer to you on that, because basically, do you want the future, well, until 2021, the ability to construct the two on the upper, on terrace? Um, but not the requirement, but the option to? Right. Yes, I think I think that would be better. I, I don't anticipate it, but I like keeping options open in case we find in case we find renovating houses way cheaper than we thought we would, and we have uh, uh, extra resources. Maybe we would decide to do that. I I, I don't anticipate that though. But, um, but so, or I, I guess I should be more clear. Option uh, option two allows. Um, you to construct that at any point in the future. Am I correct on that, Meredith? Um, so, so all zoning permits are good for two years. Ah. Um, so, so, but if you, if if the board approves your reduced single space up there, it really overrides your old option to build two spots up there. Um, but. What that does mean is if you come back and you're like, no, 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 we really want to redesign and just do this one parallel parking space, right, instead of the two that you already have permitted, you'll have to come back for an amendment to the permit or a whole new permit if it's if your old one from last year expired. There's, there's a little bit of strategic thinking about this. Um, you know, a, a, a amendment to go from the two that were authorized last year to a single parallel parking space might just be an administrative amendment. Um, yeah. So you have some options on how you want things to look at like here. It's it's just, it's a little, things are 
evolved a little bit in this application so that um, we didn't really have a chance to have this conversation before tonight. So, so I understand what, what that would allow is us to go ahead with one space. Uh, if 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 you, uh, I'm confused. <laughs> Sorry, we do would allow you to go ahead with one space. Um, no. I think I think option two would be the preference because that would allow us to construct one space yeah. in the next two years. Come back. And right. it's two years from now, not two years from the prior permit. Right. It's only another year on it. And, and if we decided we did want to do two spaces, we could come back for an amendment, whether by the board or administrative amendment. That would yeah. be our preference, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So option okay. two. Option two. Thank you for taking the time to have that discussion. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Then I think um, I think the operative question for the board, which we will um, take up in our deliberative session, is uh, should we allow the waiver and should we um, agree to option two? Does that make sense? Okay, we'll we'll save that for then. Any questions from the board about that? Pace forward. Okay, let's let's move to let's move to uh, chapter three twenty site plan standards. We're now getting into this is a minor site plan, and I'm going to move uh, briskly through this if that's okay with everyone, uh, because it's not um, very tough. Um, access and circulation staff finding is pedestrian facilities are fully developed with sufficient sides, walks, and internal walkways, as well as a nearby bus stop. Further bicycle storage will be provided. Therefore, this application complies with the requirements of 3202, access and circulation. The next is landscape and screening. Um, the staff finds uh, this parcel complies with the total landscaping minimums and the proposed site plan changes do not appear to require additional screening given the plans to retain screening vegetation around the revised um, parking spaces. Uh, section 3204 outdoor lighting not applicable. Um, Section 330, conditional use standards. So now we're moving to conditional use. Um, and um, the first part of that is 3302, capacity of community facilities and utilities. Uh, the staff finds that applicants requested expansion of the total square footage being used for office space at 11 Baldwin will not cause a disproportionate or unreasonable burden on the city's ability to provide community facilities and utilities. Um, board members, if you have any questions as I'm going through these things, just raise your hand. Um, it's pretty pro forma. I think applicants request uh, for expansion of the total footage. Um, okay, I did that. Um, um, traffic staff findings. Since staff suggests that the board determine that the proposed change complies with 3302 requirements, even with only five parking spaces, given that the expanded office use will be unlikely to have an adverse effect on traffic in the neighborhood. That's a, 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 um, a, a good suggestion. Character of the neighborhood, 3304, staff finds that um, the proposed changes of, of use to an office does not have additional undue adverse effects on the character of the Redstone neighborhood as the impact of additional landscaping on the front of the parcel would act to enhance the neighborhood character. Um, Conditions of approval, performance standards, uh, staff finds that given the other uses in the immediate neighborhood and that the expanded office use will not be concentrated in the daytime and therefore less likely to conflict with the residential uses within the greater Redstone neighborhood, staff finds the proposal does not require additional performance standards uh, as, as conditions of approval. 
So um, we've gone through uh, the entire application, um, and uh, I would like to see if staff have any questions, final questions about this, if our applicants have any final comments, and then um, I would entertain a motion to um, close the public hearing and um, and move to deliberative session in due time. Are there are there final questions or comments from uh, board members? I have a question. I'm not sure if the applicant can answer right now, but I'd like to get a sense of how many people, maybe a minimum or maximum number of cars you think would be driving to the office on any given day, just an estimate. With the five spaces, um, we're going to be limited. To, to be very honest with you, we have occupied uh, nine Bailey for over 35 years, and we've, um, you know, have, we have a slightly larger staff than we did, probably larger than we did when we first occupied nine Bailey. Um, but it would be comparable to what we've been experiencing. I'm hoping that uh, a, a more concerted effort to get people out of their cars and onto public transit or parking at the Department of Health building and taking the shuttle over during the, um, during the legislative session will reduce the number of people that we're experiencing driving into our office now. Uh, we, we now have six spaces in the back of our building and two along um, um, uh, Bailey that are sometimes filled, um, not always filled. Sometimes they're filled you know, beyond capacity. Uh, one of the reasons we expanded the additional space is I believe in the future we're going to, at least in the foreseeable future, we're going to have fewer shared offices. So we just need more rooms for people because of COVID. And I also am pretty sure that we're gonna have a lot more people working at home permanently because it's turned out to be very effective for us. Um, so I, I don't think there's gonna be any more traffic than we currently generate. And I expect a, a reduction in traffic. And that maybe doesn't answer your questions because I'm not really, it's hard to come up with a number. No, that was good, thank you. Any other questions from board members? Final comments from applicants? Meredith, do you have any final comment? Uh, Asher, it looked like you were going to say something. I was just going to say thank you for taking the time to consider our application. So. Yeah, Absolutely. I'm, I'm good. Oh, I'd like sorry. to make a Make a motion to uh, close the public hearing and move to a deliberative session. Second the motion. Motion by Rob, second by Jean. Um, yes, Meredith? Just just as discussion mode since we had the second, um, make sh maybe a little friendly amendment by somebody to make sure that we're moving to the deliberative session after the close of the full public meeting. Uh, Rob, do you a procedural question listening to what kate said when she opened the meeting do you deliberate will you close all hearings deliberate privately and and issue a written decision after the tonight yes great okay thank you a motion by rob uh second by gene i will call the roll um um gene yes uh abby hey. Yes. Rob? Yes. Joe? Yes. Um, Michael? Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, the motion carries. I think that is it. <laughs> Great. Thank you all for your time. And thank. Uh, I want to thank Meredith for the excellent staff support. Ditto. Oh. Excellent. You're welcome. If if Roger is ready, I yes. will I will assume chairship of the meeting. I uh, with great pleasure turn it over to you, Kate. <laughs> Thank you, Roger. Uh, thanks for doing such a great job and for stepping in to help out. Um, all right. So next, we will move on to our next application of the evening, which is. 
for 420 Murray Hill Drive. And folks who are here to testify on this application, if you could join us, there we are visually, if you, if you choose, though that is optional. Um, very good. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, swear in the witnesses. So if anyone um, wishing to be heard on this could, could take the oath, if you're on camera, you can raise your right hand. And um, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under, under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Okay, I heard um, Jim Tringe and Stan Welch um, both sworn in as witnesses. Was there anyone else who was wishing to be heard on this matter? I, I believe I see. Um, Peter, Peter are, did you, are you what? someone who would like to be heard on this? Um, yeah, I'm just observing. Okay, that's fine too. Thank you. All right, great. Um, so this application 420 Murray Hill Drive is an application for a second access to a parcel within Murray Hill. And I would like to start um, by asking Meredith to please give us an overview of the project. Happy to. Um, so uh, first of all, the staff report for anybody looking on at home um, on this begins on page 47 of the meeting packet. The applicant is seeking to add a second driveway on a privately owned parcel that currently contains a single family home and some water infrastructure um, that serves the Murray Hill planned unit development. Um, and this privately owned parcel is part of that PUD. Um, and the second driveway would be part of a transfer of the Murray Hill water system to the city of Montpelier. Um, and the second driveway would provide a separate municipal access to what will become a municipal water pump station. Um, that pump station is currently there, but the city's taking it over. Um, there's, there's really um, two big issues here. Um, is the pump station a water supply related facility? And if so, is it a previously existing non-conforming use that is being enlarged, extended, expanded, or intensified? Um, and then um, will the board approve the requested second driveway? Um, and that's under section 3010 on the packet. Okay, great. Thank you, Meredith. Um, what we typically do next is um, turn it over to the applicants um, to, to speak about the project and share, just give a, give a brief overview and share anything that you want to make sure we know. And then as we go through the staff report, you'll also have an opportunity to speak, speak then as well. But for starters, um, Please go ahead and tell us tell us about the project. I think I think that would be you, Jim, right? Yes. Good evening. My name is Jim Tringe. I'm a Murray Hill resident and board member. Um, I've lived in uh, the Murray Hill development for about 14 years, and I'm currently serving as the secretary of the of the homeowners association board, and also as the liaison between the board and the association and our other stakeholders in this project. Um, I'm going to give a, a brief background just to ex expand a little bit on, on Meredith's, Meredith's comments. Um, but I also want to point out that um, we also have Stan Welch, who's a, who's a professional engineer um, with Dufresne Group, who has done the engineering for this project. Um, so the Murray Hill Homeowners Association represents 85 homes and condominiums. Uh, since 1983, the water system, which uh, is privately owned, has been supplied by two bedrock wells, and it's provided uh, reliable, high quality water for drinking and domestic purposes during that time. Um, several years after the Murray Hill neighborhood was established, the city of Montpelier invested in additional water supply infrastructure that made it possible to serve higher elevation areas northeast of the city, such as the Murray Hill neighborhood. Um, so, our challenge um, has been that uh, going back to 2018, when there was a, a pretty uh, severe drought, uh, the Murray Hill well yields declined and, uh, and the well level observations were uh, seen to be historically low. Um, we were able to restore uh, well performance with some unplanned maintenance, but this experience in 2018 underscored our need to investigate alternative alternatives. Um, so with the uncertainty of the reliability of the bedrock wells um, and 
higher costs associated with uh, operating and maintaining the wells over the long term. Uh, the board of directors contracted with the Dufresne Group uh, to explore water supply options. Uh, ranging from drilling new wells and alternative routes for connecting Murray Hill to the Montpelier public water municipal system. Um, additional stakeholders in this project have included the uh, Montpelier Department of Public Works, um, Hoffer Consulting, uh, Hydrogeologists, the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources, Department of Environmental Conservation, Drinking Water State Revolving Loan Fund. So. Um, after reviewing all of the uh, options um, the, based on the monetary and non-monetary factors and with the, with the long-term stability of our homes in mind, the board entered, in, entered the association into a water system conveyance and water supply agreement with the city of Montpelier in October of 2019. So um, fast forward um, to uh, this summer, um, once again, a very dry summer and um, some sort of uh, an anxious time for the, the residents here, but uh, we have proceeded forward with the, the final design of, of, the, um, of the system and the, and the improvements. And you're, you're tonight uh, reviewing the portion of the proposed uh, improvement that would provide an access drive from uh, the cul-de-sac on the upper end of the Murray Hill development to a an existing um, uh, structure and plumbing that supports uh, the water supply for the the existing um, wells and water distribution system. Um, as part of the agreement with the city, uh, the association included an improvement of um, of the uh, the access drive to that structure. And, um, and that's what's being considered. I will say that um, we have a number of, of permits that are um, in progress. Um, and we recently received our uh, permit to construct. So uh, we are eager to continue to move this process forward with the hope of starting construction before the end of the 2020 construction year. So I'll pause there. I hope that was helpful background, but um, I, I'd uh, appreciate the board's consideration of this request. Thank you, Jim. Um, before we get into the staff report, do board members have any questions about what they just heard? Okay. Um, Jim, I think I heard you say that, um, just to help me get my bearings, I heard, heard you say that the agreement with the city includes the improvement of the access drive. Does that mean that there is an existing access drive to the water supply um, to, the, to the station now? The original, excuse me, yes. So the, the easement that exists uh, when the, the when the property was developed referred to an access drive. Uh, mm -hmm. However, um, there's no visible drive there uh, now. So uh, what we're you can probably see from the from the drawings that um, we're we're looking to um, make some grade changes as well as um, some structural changes that will support um, vehicle a vehicle uh, getting to that getting access to that structure. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, what I'd like to do then is um, move into the staff report and discuss the kind of threshold questions, if you will, that Meredith raised at the beginning. So um, we're going to start on page four of the staff report. I'm sorry, I don't have the page number within the big packet. I'm looking at the standalone staff report, but it's page 50. Page 50. All right. Once you're there, you'll, you'll be able to know where to go from there. All right. So page 50 of the big packet, page four of the standalone. And our threshold question is whether, um, what is regarding water supply facilities. They are defined as water supply, pump stations, dams, water tanks, wells, water treatment and purification facilities, and reservoirs in our zoning. 
Um, and these are not an allowed use in Res 9, the zoning district where this is located. Um, however, we know that non-conforming uses can only, as long, it, it can be a pre-existing non-conforming use, so long as it is not um, enlarged, extended, expanded, or intensified. So our threshold question is um, regarding whether this is a water supply related facility. I believe it is. Um, do others have, do others see it differently? Because it is a pump station, right? I'm sorry, was that question directed at? Oh, I guess it was. I wasn't clear though. Thank you. Okay. Yes. It's a, so there is a booster pump station there that takes the pressure in the existing uh, supply line and increases the pressure to serve uh, 12 homes at the upper elevation of the, of the system. Okay. And there is also a, a, uh, a storage reservoir there as well. Okay. So it meets the definition of the thing that today would not be allowed there. However, it's a pre-existing nonconformity. So we have ways to, we have ways to deal with that. Um, it is, uh, it's our, we need to make the determination about whether it's being enlarged, extended, expanded, or intensified. So I'll ask you, Jim, is this being um, made bigger so that it can serve more houses? It's not, the, the size is not changing. Um, it's gonna be serving the existing homes that are there. Okay, and there's going to be the addition of some monitoring infrastructure. Is, could you describe what that is and how big an impact it has on the area, if any? Yeah, that was um, that was another requirement of the city to tie it into their existing uh, wire, uh, sorry, um, radio communication system, so that they can do remote monitoring of the system um, without actually having to drive a vehicle back there to have an understanding if if water is flowing or if there's any any um, components that are in an alarm state. Okay. We don't, have that, we don't have that type of monitoring now. Okay. And is that like a three foot by three foot cube or is that a little box like a CB radio? Do you know off the top of your head what, what constitutes monitoring infrastructure? I think I'm going to ask Stan to comment on the footprint of the, of the um, communication infrastructure. If, if Stan can chime in on that with Dufresne Group. Or Stan Welch, um, Dufresne Group, I helped prepare the design. So the monitoring infrastructure in terms of footprint size is relatively small. It's basically the size of a small electric panel, something you'd have in like your garage or something that mounts to the wall. And then um, the pieces that tie into that are sensors, pressure transmitters. So there's an intrusion alarm that's like a magnet that would be kind of like what you would have on your window for your home security system. Um, a temperature monitoring alarm that's basically the size of a thermostat. Some pressure monitoring infrastructure, which is going to go on some plumbing modifications. Um, and another point to note here when we're talking about the size of the water system infrastructure uh, being enlarged or extended is that um, that 34,000 gallon reservoir that's currently acting as the source or the storage for the water in Murray Hill is going to be abandoned and is no longer going to be part of the water system. So I would just like to note that that's kind of actually reducing the impact in terms of water system infrastructure on this individual parcel. Okay. Thanks, Stan, for that good description to help us picture it. Uh, I appreciate that. So it sounds like uh, the staff recommendation is that we find that this proposal is not, for all intents and purposes, enlarging, extending, expanding, or intensifying the existing water supply related facility use. And I am comfortable with that recommendation and allowing the non-conforming use to continue. How do other board members feel? I'm seeing some nodding indicating comfort. Okay. I have a question. Who's, yeah, go ahead, Jean. Is there a, so does the site have a water systems operator? Is that the city? Yes, we currently have a, a class three licensed water system operator. It's the original developer of the, of the, uh, Neighborhood Ken Senecal. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 
Great. So I think um, as a as a board, we we've collected the information we need to to make this determination about the use, the nonconformity, and we can um, we 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 see this as a nonconforming use that that can continue because of very minimal changes to that use. So with that, I'd like to move on to section three thousand two and three thousand three, which is dimensional standards. So the um, the question here, or what we what we have here, is um, no. Re it meets the setback and the coverage requirements, um, and the question is regarding. I believe. Sorry, I'm just going to look at something here. Um, staff determination is regarding impervious surface. Is that less than two thousand square feet are being added? Um, but it mentions porous pavement that will allow for the growth of grass and therefore be permanent. Are we talking about kind of lattice-like concrete pavers that have dirt and grass growing through them? Is that what, what's, what you're using? Yes, that's what's been specified on the plans. Okay, great. For, for, a, for the portion that's most visible from the roadside, the, the, the portion that's um, closer to the structure will be more typical um, crushed stone. Great, thanks. So I, I believe that um, staff finding is that, that uh, dimensional standards, accessory stress, structures and uses are met. Any questions from board members about those sections? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to not spend time on the things that don't apply, <laughs> but if there are questions, of course, we can, we can ask them and have them addressed. So the next parts up, sections 3004, demolition, 3005, riparian areas, 3006, wetlands and vernal pools, and 3007, steep slopes. They don't apply because those things are not present on the site. Um, section 3008 is erosion control. Um, there is no erosion control plan required due to the slopes present. Um, are there any questions or concerns from the board about, about that? All right, 3009, stormwater management. Um, staff are suggesting, is suggesting compliance because the standard is that, the, that it must be in accordance with plans approved by the Director of Public Works. And this whole project is coordinated with the Director of Public Works. So I think um, that stands as evidence that DPW is okay with it. Okay, so we I believe can find that that is, that is met. All right, so we're going to move on to section 3010, access and circulation. And you got warmed up on this one in the previous application, so, and most applications that we see, in fact. Um, so this is where the criteria for evaluating the, the appropriateness of a second driveway live. It's where those criteria are. And um, this is about adequate access and circulation. Um, Shared access between parcels is strongly encouraged. A lot may be served by only one access point, except that the board may approve more than, access, more than one access on a lot when necessary to accommodate unique physical conditions on the property, to provide adequate emergency access, or to provide adequate circulation within the site. So those are ORs. So um, could, could you speak a little bit to how, how those, those are required in terms of um, any unique physical conditions on the property that require the second driveway or uh, the necessity of emergency access through a separate driveway, um, those criteria. Sure. So the, uh, the intent of the second driveway is to not disturb the um, traffic of the, the owner of the residence. Um, there is a large bedrock outcropping um, sort of separating the, the existing driveway access to the residence to the proposed driveway and that that large outcropping of ledge um, pretty much divides the two um, would divide the two uh, there's some other um, you know there's there's some other landscaping that exists between the, the proposed um, access drive and the existing drive that would be disturbed um, if if um, if this was if this access alternative wasn't allowed. So those are those are a couple of the features that were uh, went into the decision to seek a second access drive. Okay. How frequently do you suppose the 
pump station will be accessed by a vehicle? Uh, my sense is it may be as frequently as quarterly. Um, you know, that's one of the things that um, we, we don't um, typically access it by vehicle uh, currently. It's, it's really um, accessed by foot, foot traffic right now, but uh, with, with uh, ownership transferring to the city um, and no longer being um, accessed by the resident water system operator, we thought this accommodation uh, was appropriate. Are there questions from board members about um, about the access or anything related to the criteria we need to find in order to grant a second driveway? In in previous times when you you said you during a drought, did you have to have a, a some water uh, taken up there uh, to the storage tank? Uh, thankfully, no. We have not had to have water trucked in to the storage tank, knock on wood. Um, but that's certainly been um, weighing heavily on our on our minds over the last couple of years is the need to, to haul water in from off-site. But no, fortunately, we have not been in that situation yet. So you would... So this driveway would be essential in case that ever there was an emergency of some sort of, of sorts. As Stan mentioned, the actual the, the water storage reservoir is going to be taken out of service after the municipal connection is complete and this, the reservoir will no longer uh, be used for water storage at all. So, so there, any sort of um, water supply would be the responsibility of the city via the existing um, uh, distribution lines that are that are in place now so so after interconnection there would be no more need for a reservoir or or water uh hauling thank you other questions from board members oh i'll always like to oh, okay. go ahead sorry Maybe abby and then rob go ahead thanks thanks um i'm just wondering if any growth in this area is anticipated, any additional development, and how that may affect the water infrastructure needs going forward. So the, the 12 homes that are um, served by the booster pump station, those lots are, are, are built out with homes. And so there's no more developable, developable lots uh, that would be served by the booster pump station. Um, the lower uh, areas of the development are, are currently we have we have one lot that is undeveloped, um, and, but that's uh, that would be supplied by the residual system pressure and would not be using the booster pump to supply the pressure. So, um, you know, there's also three homes in, in the lower area that have their own well system system that's completely independent from uh, from our existing system. And that's um, completely outside the scope of the project to, to connect with them. But once again, they wouldn't be served by the booster pump. They would get residual city water system pressure. OK, thanks, Abby. Um, Rob? Well, yeah, I mean, I just took my observation here to get to the heart of our driveway spacing, which seems to be kind of the crux of this application and um that this is a, a proposed additional access along a cul-de-sac which the um the regs appear don't appear to be written uh with a cul-de-sac in mind uh especially with the reference to an intersection so uh with that regard i think that it's very appropriate for be reviewing this spacing and um you know i, I don't think it should be an issue thanks rob that's a nice segue to the next part you did my work for me so um do others have questions or comments about the um, the fact that the minimum driveway spacing is not met? Typically, it's 45 feet between other driveways. We're looking at plus or minus 10 feet and plus or minus 35 feet between the 420 Murray Hill and um, and this new driveway, as well as 399 Murray Hill. Um, but it's on a cul-de-sac, as noted. Um, any questions or anything more that you'd like to know about that? All right. Well, 
I think we have what we need to know for that portion, 3010 access and circulation. So I'll just, the, just to tie a bow on it, the um, last two items in the staff report are 3011 parking and loading and 3012 signs, neither of which are applicable, um, but are there any questions? All right, um, any final questions from the board about the project? Okay, and any um, last comments from folks presenting about the project? Appreciate your consideration and, um, and um, we appreciate the support of the, the city of Montpelier. They've been very supportive in this, in this process. It's a great, um, having access to municipal water supplies is a is a great option for our, our neighborhood and um, we really support their their um, uh, their engagement in this project from the from the first time we approached them back in 2018. Great. All right. Thank you, Jim. All right. Since um, I believe we've collected all the evidence that we that we feel is necessary, and so. I will entertain a motion to enter deliberative session at the conclusion of the public portion of tonight's meeting. I second the motion to go into deliberate session. Okay. I'll take a I'll, um, so moved. Uh, so moved. Thank you, Joe. And a second from Jean. I made it sound like I was making the motion, but I was actually just making a suggestion. So thanks, Jean and Joe, for covering it. Uh, very good. We have a motion and a second. And what I will do now is I will call the roll. Jean. Yes. Roger. Yes. Abby. Yes. Joe. Yes. Rob. Yes. Uh, Michael. Yes. And I vote yes as well. We will consider this in our deliberative session and get you a written decision as soon as we can. Um, thank you very much for your participation. Thank you guys very much. And thank you, Meredith, for all your help putting together the applications. Appreciate it. You're welcome, Stan. All right. And now I am, okay, back to our agenda. So um, the next item on our agenda, sorry for the angle, um, is other business. Our next meeting will be October 5th. Um, is there any other other business that people wish to announce? Okay. In that case, I think, Meredith, what we do is we adjourn to deliberative session, correct? Correct. All and right. I sent all of you an email that has the login information for the deliberative session if it's completely separate Zoom session. Sounds good. So um, what we'll do is um, <laughs> after we close this meeting, we'll take, take five minutes and people can stretch their legs. And then we'll come back and we will deliberate. Um, so is there a motion to adjourn to deliberative session? So uh, wait, wait, it's not quite adjourned. Close the public hearing and move to a, to deliberative. That's what I meant. Sorry, it's adjourn is, a, we don't want to use the adjourn thing. We don't want to do that. <laughs> um, is that all right? Okay, now? motion to close the public meeting and move to a deliberative session. Thank you. <laughs> motion from Joe? Second. Second from Abby. Um, we'll take the vote. Jean? Yes. Roger? Yes. Abby? Yes. Joe? Yes. Rob? Yes. Michael? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Let's return using the link provided by Meredith in our emails at 818. See you then. Thank you all very much. <laughs>